These pink plasticky looking things that resemble gummy candy are actually 3D printed tracheas of babies and toddlers. The trachea is the windpipe that connects your voice box to your lungs and operating on this delicate part of the body can be tricky. I'm a pediatric otolaryngologist. So. Dr. Kaylin Johnson is a pediatric ear, nose and throat surgeon at Seattle Children's and specializes in airway procedures for kids who have difficulty breathing and swallowing. Among the complex surgeries he does is what's known as a slide tracheoplasty and training for that surgery is possible thanks to this, a 3D printing machine. And then actually rehearsed the surgical procedure with a life-size model of the patient with our surgical team. You're going to basically stitch the airway to the ligament. Seth the Friedman is a scientist at Seattle Children's. We have a bunch of different inks that are loaded here. At the hospital's innovation like lab, Friedman uh, shows HealthLink an inside look at how such models are made. Yeah. And so you can see this purple thing here. It starts with a CT scan of the child's trachea. And then we take the set of images and what we'll first do is we'll first um, make a model of the inner part, the part that you can't see, the air. And then we have quite a like step-by-step -step process where we can talk to doctors like Dr. Johnson and others to find out exactly how many cartilage rings there are. You can see the little loops and the, the model that's starting to form. Then the printer uses those images to create a mold of sorts. The outcome so is this, is a piece of plastic. Of we have all of our great clay tools here to clean out. Then it's cleaned. This can be used to remove some of the support material. Washed several times. So this is the gel or the material that you'll evacuate. Then extract so it. Then, the replica yeah. is then clamped on a makeshift box so. where surgeons like Dr. Johnson will use it for training before doing the actual surgery on a child's trachea. We can actually decide how we want to make this cut and transect the airway at the right spot. Johnson and Friedman say these models provide much needed peace of mind to the patient. Surgeons really like to practice. So they are sort of more like the concert, concert violinist and this is a patient that they actually want to practice their craft on. These tools are now being used overseas. Dr. Johnson and his team have traveled to South America to teach 3D printing models for tracheoplasty. Johnson says it makes sense to practice, particularly for newer surgeon trainees. So this allows a much more equitable distribution of experience getting prepared for not just the procedure itself, but also patient-specific preparation for surgeries. Dr. Johnson is set to travel to Santiago, Chile next year to continue teaching the training. For HealthLink, I'm Christine Pei.